in on a beautiful Saturday evening. We welcome you to Fresno, California, here in the Valley. Inside of Bulldog Stadium, a critical non-conference matchup as BYU comes calling against the Fresno State Bulldogs. Great to have you with us as always alongside of Tom Ramsey. I am Roy Philpot and Tom, a rare early November non-conference matchup between two old WAC rivals. Should be a lot of fun tonight. Well, and BYU comes off a tough schedule so far, right? But they also come off a win last week, and that was important just to get some momentum against San Jose State. And, you know, even though that schedule's been tough, you look at what Fresno State has done. They were 1-11 and a year ago, Roy, and they're right up with some big names in terms of game improvement. One of the most improved teams in the country. One of the main reasons why the transfer quarterback, Marcus McMarion, out of Oregon State. He's a junior. Tom, he's got two years left, and he's been solid. Well, he's been a real steadying influence to the Fresno State program, and he played in some big games up at Oregon State. He played in the Civil War last year against Oregon. They won that game, and Marcus McMarion will have some opportunities tonight to throw the ball down the field. Now, beautiful evening for college football. Temperatures in the mid-60s. Fresno State won the coin toss and deferred as Shelton from two yards deep. We'll try to cross the 25 tripped up there. It'll be first and 10 for BYU after a 22-yard return. So off we go in Fresno. One of the most improved teams in America, Tom, against BYU, a team that has struggled this year when you look at the record. But injuries have really wreaked havoc with this team this year. And especially at quarterback, where Tanner Mangum's going to get the start. 25 career games he's played in, 20 starts, had a high ankle sprain. He's been banged up, and he's got to play well tonight for the Cougars to have a shot. Well, he really does, Roy. And, and he's been, I would say at best, he's been inconsistent this year. And, you know, he has struggled with injuries, and seemingly he's as healthy as he's been all year. BYU injuries have been the story. Trineman with the catch. And gets across the 35, brought down by Tank Kelly. That's a pickup of seven. 36 players have lost time due to injuries, including 24 residing in the two deep for the Cougars. And not to mention 13 starters. And the running back unit tonight is a mash unit at best. Four different running backs not expected to play tonight. On second and short. Handoff, Kofensis, former quarterback, brought down by Bell. It'll be third and short. And we welcome you here to Fresno, California on ESPN2. Opening kick received by BYU, their first possession. And facing a third down and two. Cougars coming in at 2-7. and seven. Fresno State, one of the most improved teams in America this year. The win tonight will clinch bowl eligibility. Mangum with time in the flats, and the pass is incomplete. Trying to spot Shumway. And now the punt team will try on the field for the Cougars. Well, Roy, and that's really how their season has gone this year. A lot of drop passes, a lot of missed opportunities. Tanner Mangum right there. Firing the ball out to the wide side. And just the receiver, Shumway, just unable to pull it in. Johnny Linehan, the punter from New Zealand. He's had a strong year this year for the Cougars. Deshaun Johnson waiting to receive. Well, it's been a wild day in college football. We've already seen a couple of upsets. Iowa knocking out Ohio State. Georgia survived at home against South Carolina. Clemson rallied to defeat NC State. It's a punt of 38 yards. Bulldogs will take over for the first time. Yeah, the Buckeyes found out how hard Kinnick Stadium is. Boy, I tell you, Iowa just sitting there laying in wait. And really shocked the Buckeyes. Shocked them from the first play of the game. Yeah, it really JT did. Barrett throwing a pick six. Our first look. At Marcus McMarion, the transfer from Oregon State. Big plays have been the M.O. for the Bulldogs this year. And McMarion has been the conductor in the Bulldogs orchestra. And he'll swing it out far side. With a move and tripped up. Ushered out of bounds. As Fred Warner makes the stop. And Amari Scott with the grab. 
Well, Scott is a big, good-looking athlete, 6'1", 210 pounders. They just get the ball to him in space, and tell you, he almost breaks it. Warner with a great tackle, and Warner was questionable coming in whether he'd play tonight. Operating out of the pistol. Mims, the freshman, gets the handoff and a punishing run. A pickup of four. Powu with a stop. Well, Fresno State has rebuilt this team under first-year head coach Jeff Tedford, Tom, and we've had some fun conversations with their staff this week, as well as BYU, but Bulldogs 1-11 last year. Already five victories in Tedford's first season here in the Valley. And I think you have to attribute it to, to both sides of the ball, right? I mean, they're scoring a lot of points, over 30 points a game, and defensively, they are just darn aggressive. Josh Hoke at the new running back. Mr. Consistency is what Tedford calls him. And another power run into plus territory, and that'll move the chains. Well, credit the offensive line there. Aaron Mitchell, the center, senior out of San Diego, Cathedral Catholic High. And, you know, low man wins there, Roy. It's just they, they push the pile. They get lower than the opposition, and they do a great job. And Hoke it there, just, just pile driving. Bulldogs have been ultra physical after a gain of nine from the 45. And a punishing win at San Diego State last month. It kind of set the tone for this impressive run. Hoke at deep handoff straight ahead. And bullies his way inside the 40. Tonga brought him down. That's another gain of eight. And they used Hokit a couple weeks ago in a re resounding victory at San Diego State. And, you know, San Diego State's really been the cream of the crop of the Mountain West Conference the last couple years and being the conference champions. But Hokit scored three touchdowns in that game, and they really controlled the ground game with him. Last two carries netted 17 yards. Bulldogs will take their time on offense. Their recipe for winning Building an early lead and the run game. McMarion far side and that one sails out of bounds. Looking for Jordan. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, I was joking. I saw Jameer Jordan before the game. He averages about 25 yards a catch, Roy. And he, he caught a deep ball down the sideline. I said, hey, are you just working on your average? And he kind of kind of looked at me and laughed. And now third and one for the Bulldogs. Mims back at running back. Need just over a yard. Mims has it. And a shoestring stop prevents what could have been a touchdown. That was Zane Anderson. Tommy tripped him up the last possible second. Yeah, Zane Anderson made a touchdown saving tackle, as you mentioned, Roy. And what's interesting, boy, I tell you, BYU thought the ball was going to go behind all the blockers, and Mims just kicked it out the backside, and he almost broke one off. Seventh play of this possession for Fresno State. It's first on this Saturday night. And this is the area of the field. McMarion likes to go down the field, and they might have what they like on the outside with corners playing up. And McMarion will settle short for Jameer Jordan and a short pickup on first down. Well, you mentioned it earlier, the Bulldogs coming off a surprising home setback to UNLV last weekend. Tom, they entered as nearly three touchdown favorites, undefeated in the Mountain West before that night. And so we were kind of curious to see how they would bounce back here tonight, remaining at home, and so far it's been a good start. Tedford, of course, longtime coach at Cal, two-time Pac-12 coach of the year. Spent time in the CFL as well as at Oregon. Former Fresno State quarterback. McMarion with time, the pump fake, and the quick dish to Jared Rice. Brought down by Powell. It's a gain of four. Well, and what's interesting, Jeff Tedford, of all things, last year, he was a consultant up at the University of Washington, helping Chris Peterson, an old colleague of his from the Oregon days, on staff just as a consultant, an extra set of eyes. I'd say it paid off for everyone. Ronnie Rivers, DeJounte O'Neal check in. They'll be split backs 
flanking McMarriott on third down. Quarterback draw. And he'll be stopped two yards short by Pau again, who's had an active start. Yeah, Butch Powell coming from that middle linebacker position, reads it well. They diagnose a quarterback draw, and they're going to bring out the field goal team for Fresno State. But Powell just does a nice job staying in his assigned role there and making the stop. Jimmy Camacho checks in for the first time. He's had a solid season. Now a senior for the Bulldogs. We'll attempt this one from 42. Two of four from this range this year has a cannon for a leg. And right between the pipes as Fresno State draws first blood. Three to nothing. Our score, 8-16 remaining here in the first quarter. Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Geico. Back in the Valley, Fresno, California. Critical non-conference matchup continues between the Bulldogs of Fresno State and BYU. 3-0 our score as Fresno State on its first possession. Connects with a 42-yard field goal by that man right there. Jimmy Camacho. A good special team, so critical to win games like these, especially Fresno State gets back into conference play. Win tonight by the Bulldogs will clinch bowl eligibility. Shelton from his one. Had a crease his first time. Nearly had another one there. Instead, it's tripped up at the 24. Busy night in college football as we check in for a Pac-12 update with Chris Cotter. Trojans grabbing that early lead against perhaps Heisman contender Khalil Tate. And the Wildcats out in the flats. Braden El Bakri. And the rumbling fullback moves ahead to the 30. Brought down by James Bailey and Jeffrey Allison. It's a gain of seven. BYU went three and out on its first possession tonight. Yeah, they did. They had a missed pass on third down. And a lot of pressure on this young man, Tanner Magum, where... His head coach, Kalane Satake, in his second year at BYU, 11 and 11. Tonight will determine, uh, obviously, be a uh, either for the good or the bad. They came in prepared, though, and relatively healthy. Mangum completes to Bo Tanner, and that'll move the chains. Jaron Bryant in coverage. First first down of the night for BYU. Well, the injuries have really plagued this program this year. We gave you some of the numbers earlier. You see them again. And interesting talking to Kalani Satake this week. Loves, loves his team, loves his job, loves the fans, but realizes this has been a difficult second season, in part because of the injuries, but he refuses to use that as an excuse. Mangum escapes and slides in safely after a gain of four and a half. Well, it's interesting, Roy. I, I really think their schedule did not do them. It, it, it really didn't help them out at all, right? They played LSU when LSU was ranked up top. They were uh, LSU was number 19 when they played them in September. They played Wisconsin, a number four team, and then they played Mississippi State on the road. So they only had Wisconsin at home out of those three, and that's tough sledding. If you go down to Starkville, you go... To Baton Rouge, you're going to get someone's best, and they got him. El Bakri, the running back, off a of play action. Mangum will flip it out. And El Bakri makes his second grab, tripped up near a first down. They'll give it to him. After a gain of seven and a half, Juju Hughes belted him to the turf. Well, that's a really nice wrinkle, and, and what, why am I not surprised? Because Ty Detmer is the offensive coordinator for this BYU team, and he, he knows how to get some momentum. Short, easy pass right there. Mangum out back right to the back in the flat. And, you know, easy pitch and catch. Move the chains. Get some momentum. Get some first downs. Squally Canada in at running back. 
Now Bakri, the walk-on, forced into a couple of carries. He's really not used to having the football in his hands. Down the field pass is incomplete. Shubway, the intended target, blanketed by Tank Kelly. Well, Tanner Mangum is coming off two consecutive 300-yard games. And earlier I said he's been inconsistent. He did find consistency going over 300 yards. And, and Roy, the interesting thing about that's first time since 2015 they've had consecutive games passing over 300 yards. Well, Taysom Hill was the starter last season. Mangum ended up being the backup, attempted only 18 passes. It's a different BYU attack. He fell far side. And a quality pickup on second down and 10. Hughes ushered him out. Gain of eight yards, it'll be third and two. Well, Ty Detmer, the offensive play caller, threw for over 15,000 yards in his BYU career, won the Heisman Trophy, and still has the same smile he had some 27 <laughs> years ago. Well, I tell you, he loves his job. There's a guy who gets a lot done, and uh, boy, it's uh, remarkable that he's giving back and making him good. Facing a five-man front, Mangum scoots ahead and kneeled his way for about a yard. And he's going to end up a yard short to make it fourth down. Well, Roy, I was talking to Ty Demery before the game, and one thing he said, you, you know, Tanner Mangum really has taken too many shots, right? And you, you want a quarterback, your starter, I mean, as his helmet almost comes off, and he's lucky it didn't come off because he would have had to take a playoff. Cougars will go for it. Mangum goes under center. Well, Bakri, the running back. And a patient run. Should net the first down. It'll all come down to the spot. Hughes was in there to wrestle him down. I think they're going to have to measure it, too. Oh, Bakri really got upended. Now, Bakri, a Officials timeout. Throwback for player. A walk on for the Cougars. More of an inside zone runner. Was actually a high school linebacker, second team All State, but they've nicknamed him Weapon X this year. You know, Bakri is going to have to have more carries like that when assuming he got the yardage. And it's close. Yeah, he just hasn't touched the ball a whole lot. And he came up short. And the Bulldogs defense holds. Oh, first and 10 for Fresno State when we come back. 4.22 remaining here in a fast-moving first quarter. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Lexus. Experience amazing. Well, many people wondering how Jeff Tetford has already begun the process of changing the culture here in Fresno. And one of the ways he has built trust with his team and that unity walk you just saw right there happening some two hours before kick another way to try to bring this team together and maximize its talent and he mentioned that to us several times this week in our conversations with him Tom three nothing Bulldogs their second possession and dancing ahead is Scott for a nice game give him seven and he said that's really one of the things that perhaps was missing when he arrived there was a certain level of talent but he started to treat his players more as people. He started to take a deeper interest in each and every one of them and trying to build trust with the staff. Tim DeRuiter did a nice job, and Tedford's trying to build on what happened when DeRuiter had some of his more successful campaigns. Second down and short, and so far it's looked pretty good with a 5-3 and three start. In zone read, Jordan Mim spins his way for a first down and a late flag on the field. Yeah, I believe Fresno State's going to get called for a hold here. And, you know, Roy, it's not as easy Holding. to change culture. Offense, number 58, 10-yard penalty 
Three plays, second down. So they got the left tackle, Christian Kronk, on the hold, but changing culture is difficult. You really have to, to break everything down. And I think the most remarkable thing about Jeff Tedford and what he did, it, it really started in the weight room, right? He went after and got two coordinators, offense and defense, that he, he had heard about, didn't know them personally. And he also did the same with Andy Ward, the strength and conditioning coach. And Andy Ward, you know, you don't think, oh, strength and conditioning guy, that important? No, he held, holds people accountable. And, I, you know, they've improved their strength, their quickness. And no doubt, he's been a big reason why they've won as many games as they have. First penalty of the night for Fresno State. McMarion will fire it out complete to Keyshawn Johnson. It's interesting with all the coaches we've spoken with this year traveling across the country, even down to Australia, the strength and conditioning coach, if you really sit down with the head men running the show in college football, a lot of times it comes back to what that guy is able to do. And for Andy Ward, it's been a great addition. And he's not the biggest strength and conditioning coach, but he gets the job done. And he's really important because he spends all the time in the summer with the team during offseason workouts. Yeah, he came from Stanford and, and Coach Tedford had heard a lot about him. And Andy Ward had good training for sure. Nick Marion wants it all. Looking deep. Jordan's got it for the first down. It'll be first and goal for Fresno State. Well, he's the home run threat, and McMarion was on point for that gain of 58. Well, Jameer Jordan's their home run hitter. He averages 25 yards per reception, and he is the guy running the post that time. Inside zone, Mims tripped up. Second and goal from the two coming up. And here comes Tempo. Yeah, they almost had him, and it's nice use of Tempo here. Referee's having a tough time spotting the ball. Mims, the stutter step. Did he get there? He did. And the Bulldogs with their first touchdown of the night. Boy, Mims doing a nice job getting over. Stayed low. They got a nice block. Kronk got a nice block at the line of scrimmage from his left tackle position. And he got face mask as he went over. The face mask not getting called. It's a nice run by Mims. Jimmy Camacho on for the extra point. Fourth touchdown run of the season for Jordan Mims. The freshman. And Camacho bangs it through. Now the Bulldogs trying to become bowl eligible tonight. Trying to win their sixth game of this season and well on their way. Jameer Jordan getting the job done. And then the touchdown by Jordan Mims in Fresno State out to an early advantage here at home. Well, make sure you kick off your Week 9 NFL Sunday with the Countdown Crew beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Over on ESPN, they'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, plus previews of each and every game. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, hard to believe we're already at Week 9. We're talking playoffs relatively soon. Shelton from his two. 10-0 our score back in Fresno. And the special teams have been special this season for the Bulldogs. Wrapped up after a short return. Aaron Mosby got there. And BYU will begin its third possession with poor field position. Well, special teams right there in the name of the game. Fresno State doing a great job. We take a look now at how both teams will plan for success tonight. Brought to you by our good friends at Northwestern Mutual. And it's not rocket science. Tom, it's football. Now, BYU, you want to stop the run, and you want to, it, on offense, you've got to start running the ball yourself, getting the clock in order. Of course, you've got to get the ball to Bushman. And Fresno State's doing exactly what they want to do, staying balanced on offense and being aggressive on D. Right on cue, Bushman, his first grab of the night, his 32nd catch of this season, seventh in the country. With all tight ends, he has been a rock-solid target for Tanner Mangum. Really, his security blanket this season. 
Yeah, he's been good. Number one receiver. And it, again, you know, a guy that you just need to incorporate more into that offense and just feed him the ball more. Play action. Mangum slings it. First down. And the Cougars keep this early drive alive. Mike Bell with the hit after the short pickup. The grab made by Hefo. And they've been looking for playmakers this whole season, Roy. Last week, K.J. Hall, running back, had an outstanding first half against San Jose State, and then he got hurt. He's not even up and available this week for the game. So all of a sudden, they have a guy. They go to a guy. He has a good half of a game, and then they can't utilize him the next week because of injury. And Hall was impressive watching that game last week. Flea flicker back to Mangum. And a nice shot by the Fresno defense. Pass will be ruled incomplete. Looking for Bo Tanner. And the Cougars trying to find a spark here on offense. Could not find it there. Well, and, and credit, I like, the, I like the trickery, but Jeffrey Allison, the middle linebacker, was on a blitz, and he just kept coming and ran after Mangum. And it creates just another long down for them, second down, and ball short to the receiver but boy credit Allison that time for coming hard Mangum was thought to finally be healthy this week They're suffering that lower extremity sprain and dump it across the middle Bushman with a nice pickup ahead to the 45 yard line a trio of Bulldog defenders brought him down led by Juju Hughes after a gain of 20 there's your guy Bushman we knew he was a good target coming into the game. Ty Detmer really likes what Matt Bushman gives this offense. He has, he can separate from defenders. It's a nice little prescribed route to him, just an underneath crossing route. And Mangum delivering the ball on time. First quarter drawing to a close after the longest play of the evening for the Cougars. In search of some kind of momentum, trailing by 10. Play action again for Mangum across the middle. Catch number three for Bushman into Fresno State territory. Well, a tight end should be a quarterback's best friend. It looks like they're getting to know each other pretty well tonight. This is the end of the first quarter. Final play of a fast-moving first 15 minutes. And the Bulldogs trying to win their sixth game of the season. It's been a fast start. It's 10-0. Did nothing lead, start of our second quarter. Back inside of Bulldog Stadium, Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott. Fantastic to have you along this evening. It's been a wild day in college football. More on that as we go through. Second and short coming up for the Cougars. The handoff goes to Squally Canada, who finds some running room. And tripped up crossing the 40. On second and short, that'll move the sticks. Now Canada stepping in with all those injuries taking place at the running back position. Most notably and most recently K.J. Hall who had the standout performance last week, Tom, as you indicated, against San Jose State. Yeah, again, they're just trying to get untracked again with another back. Canada giving them a little hope this week. And, you know, they got to run into a very tenacious and tough Fresno State run defense. Mangum, 9 for 12 to begin tonight. Make it 9 for 13 as that one was tapped and sent down by Nathan Madsen. Well, and, and Roy, when you look at BYU's offense, again, another indecision there by the quarterback. What it leads is, you know, you don't have a lot of points. You're 124th in the country. The rush yards per game are minimal at best. And then third down conversions Again, I, I think, you know, that's when you got to use your tight end and more and incorporate and get into shorter yardage and manageable third downs. Last BYU possession. Ended on fourth down. Mangum extending and delivers downfield incomplete. Well, that's exactly what Fresno State's defense wants Tanner Mangum to do roll to the right cut down the field in which they have to cover and really they don't give themselves a good chance so it's a third and long here trying to spot Bo Tanner 
near the 15. Cougars 0 for 2 on third down tonight. And this is where the Bulldogs like to bring pressure. Under their first year play caller, Orlando Steinauer. Hifo in motion now in the slot. Mangum looking his way. The pass will be caught by Micah Simon, brought down by Hughes. Tom should be a yard short of the first down, however. And there is a flag on the field. Well, and they brought six and spied a seventh. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Third down. Well, they get to replay the down here. It'll be third and five. And BYU, they had a nice little wrinkle there getting Hefo the ball. Or Simon, excuse me. And, you know, now they'll, again, I think I think this is where Bushman becomes a target. Simon and, and Shumway. Cougars need five from the 31. Mangum. Passes caught, drive continues. Double coverage in the vicinity of Jonah Trineman. And Tank Kell couldn't get there in time. That's a pickup of nine yards. Really a nice catch that time by Trineman on the sideline. And again, Fresno State bringing blitz. But watch Trineman. He works back to the quarterback, and he really has great body position that time, keeping the defender on his back. And Nice job protecting the football, getting the first down. You know, one of the crutches with Tanner Mangum this year, sometimes he locks in on a receiver, a particular side of the field. Thus far tonight, he's getting away with it, and he's off to a strong start. Tenth play of this possession. He'll fake the reverse. Mangum with a running lane, directing traffic, and Mangum steps out. It'll be first and goal for BYU. That's a gain of 13 yards, and Mangum is athletic and can be dangerous now that he's healthy. And, and in talking to BYU's coaches yesterday, they, they want to not, you know, Tanner Mangum has been trying to do a lot, right? Just do your just do your part. And I think right there is a great decision, pulling the ball down, finds a running lane, gets enough for another first down. They're inside the 10. More importantly, well, they just drew a penalty that time for an illegal substitution. They have to get points on the board, Roy. Oh, Tanner was confused about who should have been on the field during that sequence. And Kalani Sitake trying to figure things out himself. Illegal substitution offense breaking the huddle with 12 prior to the timeout request. Five-yard penalty, first down. So instead of first and goal inside the 10, they'll push it back to the 14. Yeah, you can't, can't break the huddle with 12. Maybe they were trying to confuse the old Canadian defensive coordinator Orlando Steinauer the Fresno State defensive coordinator that's my inside joke he actually came from Canada had played and coached up there for quite a while an important possession for BYU off its second win of the season defenses checks back in at running back He's played some of the Wildcat spot this year that's number two in white Mangum tied in Bushman has it and pushed down short of the 10. James Bailey and Mike Bell combined to make the stop and the first time tonight the Cougars in the Fresno State red zone and Roy you mentioned something a moment ago about Mangum locking on receivers and I think a tight end always kind of breaks that mold a little bit based on coverage you know where the tight end's going to be it's an easier throw you're not trying to get the ball outside the hash marks and and Bushman's a nice big target. He's, I believe that's his fourth catch. 12th play of the possession. Braden L. Bakery checks back in at running back. Mangum serving and wisely throws that one away. No heavy pressure that time. Jasad Haynes, a sophomore from right here in Fresno. A little late but applied enough for Mangum to get rid of it. Yep, smart heady play, veteran play there. Just no one to go. Good coverage by the defense that time, and a big third down here for BYU. This is when they have to be better. They have to be better on third down. They have to be better scoring points. 
There's a look at the good coverage. And Hefo's in the slot up top. Third and goal, Mangum floats it, corner. And the pass is incomplete, trying to spot his big tight end, Matt Bushman. Double cover, Jerron Bryant, James Bailey. In to make sure that play had no shot. Yeah, Bryant came over late, swatted the ball away. The ball just hung up a little too long. And if it comes out just a little quicker, Bushman doesn't get off the ball really quick. And there's nothing to influence that underneath defender. So two defenders go with Bushman and a third in the vicinity. I just think you have to just really layer the route a little more and have a guy, one more option near Bushman. Red Alvin, nine for 13 this season from 28 yards. Make it 10 of 14. And the Cougars on the board for the first time. A lengthy BYU possession. Nets three points. BYU trailing by touchdown. He had 13, 14. Okay, 1478. All right. Now don't forget the ESPN app is a fan's best friend this fall. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or, of course, on the go. Get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming today. Back in Fresno, 10 to 3, our new score. After the 13 play, 78 yard drive by the Cougars. And Andrew Mickelson will send it inside the five. O'Neill twists and turns his way to the 19. And the Bulldogs will take over. So, an important response there by BYU, trailing early by two scores, a 2 and 7 team in search some sort of offensive confidence. They got a little bit of it on that last drive. Well, they converted a third down, which I think is was really important. They, they got some additional rush yards. They had some good decisions by the quarterback. Getting the ball down the field, I think, again, coming away with points, Roy, so important against Fresno State. Fresno State's averaging over 30 points a game. They're dangerous, and they got guys that can go the distance. Four-man front for the Cougars. Worst starting field position of the evening for Fresno State. DeJounte O'Neal across left tackle. Sione Takitaki with a stop after a short pickup of three. Again, we mentioned it. Fresno State very physical at the line of scrimmage this season, both on offense and defense. And the recipe for winning these five games so far, jumping out to the early lead. Play action passing game, taking shots when they're available. They've done that tonight and then some. McMarion fakes one side and shovels it off to Darion Grimm on the other for a nice game. Chris Wilcox in coverage. Well, the Bulldogs like to get the ball out in space to those wide receivers. One guy we haven't heard a lot of tonight. He has a catch, but only for three yards is Keyshawn Johnson. Number three. He's really their go-to guy. He's a far screen at the very top. Third and five. Cougars with a three-man front. And that's all they'll bring in the pass is incomplete. And McMarion was hearing footsteps that time, looking across the middle for Keyshawn Johnson. And a three and out by the Bulldogs offense. They, they tried to run Johnson underneath Roy on a crosser. I think the, the ball may have gotten tipped. I, I thought when it came out of McMarion's hands, I had the glasses on Johnson coming across, and, and it, it was a great designed route. He would have been wide open. The ball just got tipped and it went away from him. Blake Cusick checks in to punt for the first time tonight for the Bulldogs. And under duress, turns it over beautifully. And a Fresno bounce will finally be ruled down inside the 15. A 62-yard punt. BYU taking over when we come back.
ESPN College Football, brought to you by Hyundai. Better drives us. And Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. Well, Fresno State University, the first university in this great country of ours to grow the grapes, develop their own wine, and sell the product. Many universities have now followed suit, but it all started right here in the Valley. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, Jeff Tepfer, the head coach for the Bulldogs, year number one. What a great start it has been, and an interesting start to our game here tonight after a stand by the Cougars' defense. BYU takes over in poor field position with a chance of trying to tie this one up. And Mangum fires a pass that's going to be picked off. Jerron Bryant's got it. Bryant off to the races. Three flags on the field will check the penalty. And for Bryant, that will be his fourth pick of the season. We'll see if the play stands. And what a big play this potentially could be, really, for both sides. Boy, Bryant just was right there to make the play. And with that many flags coming out, Roy, just it's really hard. To, that's why they're huddled down there, working it out. And there's a Big 12 officiating crew led by Reggie Smith this evening. And if I'm reading lips correctly, at least there's one offsides penalty in the mix. There are fouls by both teams. Personal foul. Chop block, offense, numbers 35 and 59. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, number five. The foul's offset, replay, first down. Well, back three, Thomas Schoff, the guilty party for BYU. And after all of that, the two penalties will negate the pick six. Wow. Well... Lucky for BYU there because that was an errant throw that came out. And then you, really everything happened right around number five there. He ends up holding and then the chop block right behind him. Oh, you could see both uh, both penalties. And sure enough, the referees got it right. Nullify the play, replay the down. So a huge sequence will actually favor BYU. El Bakri, the running back, flanking Mangum. Four-man front for the Bulldogs, El Bakri. The deep give ahead of the 25, and when he runs, he rumbles with the ball. And, and Roy, you know, we talk about defense and, and aggressiveness and opportunistic play. So far, Fresno State, and the big turnaround, the big win turnaround for Fresno State, I think has been driven by the defense. They have forced 14 forced turnovers this year. It puts them at 38th in the country at that number last year think about it they only had nine forced turnovers the entire year after a gain of eight now Bakri straight ahead and a punishing run to the 29 will move the chains Jeffrey Allison credited with a stop now remember this this Fresno State team they played early in the season they played at Alabama they played at Washington and that was in the first three weeks of the season Two teams that made the playoff last year, mind you. And that really has kind of set the tone for the Bulldogs' season. You play teams of that caliber. They obviously didn't win those games. Calls their first time out of the half. But they were competitive, especially in the final two quarters. In a strange way, that helped build some confidence here in the Valley. Yeah, just as Fresno State's coaches told us, they became battle-tested. 10 to 3 our score timeout on the field The college football playoff top 25 ranking show Tuesday at 7 on ESPN presented by Goodyear well, Hard to figure out if the top 4 will be adjusted with the second playoff reveal coming up Tuesday night over on ESPN at 7 p.m. Eastern Did have some upsets today in college football back in Fresno with Tom Ramsey Roy Philpott Cougars beginning this drive with poor field position again. Mangum floats it to Bushman, his tight end and favorite target, who dances out crossing the 35. Biggest story of the day for you, Tom. We've seen upsets, Iowa defeating Ohio State. 
A couple of undefeated teams remain that way. What's your key takeaway? I, I think, well, it's interesting when a team in the top four gets throttled it right, right away, and Ohio State, you, you kind of say, okay, let's move on. They're pretty much out of it they now. They were close to the you, top four. You think, right? Yep. And, and Georgia winning, to me, their continuance, continuing dominant play is impressive, and they have they have a huge roadblock next week against Auburn. Squally Canada, the carry in the first down and knocked down hard by Jeffrey Allison. Well, BYU trying to find its rhythm on offense. They've done so in a couple of possessions tonight. Just three points to show for it. Well, think about this. Allison, 250-pound middle linebacker. When the new coaching staff came in, he was 275. They said, hey, you might want to drop, maybe not go to In-N-Out Burger as much. Let's lean down. He dropped 25 pounds. He has been a one-man wrecking crew from that middle linebacker position. Mangum with time. Fires a missile incomplete looking for Trineman. And coverage was closing fast on first down by Mike Bell. And, and Mangum, again, Roy, I think he's... It, it looks to me like he's predetermining his throws because he had... Shumway off in the flat who was really uncovered. It was not as far down the field, but take take the easy game. Second and ten Mangum. Forced that pass into Micah Simons mitts. Tank Kelly was right behind to make sure there was no completion. Well, I'm going to blame that one on Micah Simon. He, he just not, the, the receivers at times have to win. They have to create separation. They have to create windows that a quarterback can throw into. BYU's had a tough go of it on third down this year. They're 104th in the nation, 34%, and this is a big third down here against Fresno State. Halfway through our second quarter. Here in Fresno on third down for the Cougars. Mangum, pressure. Down he goes back at the 35. Robert Stanley, the senior from Las Vegas, got there. And Tom, that's a loss of seven yards and a breakdown up front for the Cougars. Well, they were in coverage that time. They only rushed four guys. And, it, you know, they ran a little stunt on the near side. And Stanley making a great play, comes up with a sack. Johnny Linneman checks back in. And the Bulldogs setting up for a punt return. Two returners in the fair catch called for by Damari Scott after a punt of 42. Beautiful night here in the Valley and a 10 to 3 score. Now, one of the big changes this year for the Bulldogs, Marcus McMarion, the quarterback who came in from Oregon State. And McMarion, a year ago, only a sophomore directing back-to-back -back wins against Arizona and Oregon. And, in fact, the Beavers' victory against the Ducks ending an eight-game skid in the Civil War. And McMarion, one of the big reasons why, his dual threat ability and his accurate passing. And final score there, you see... A 10-point win for the Beavers, ending that streak. And McMarion, instrumental up in Corvallis. And here in Fresno, where he was born, as Josh Hokett carries it across the 30 for a gain of nine. Civil War is always a great game. I mean, they, they get after it. But when you go eight straight years not winning and you break a streak like that, that's big play. And his that veteran leadership has really paid off for the Bulldogs here. Hokett straight ahead. On second and short, we'll pick up four. And McMarion, his story is so interesting as well because he entered fall camp this year in Corvallis. And so about a weekend, it was announced he was not going to be the starting quarterback. And immediately he decided to transfer out as a grad transfer. Eligible, obviously, immediately. He drew interest from a handful of schools as well, including San Jose State, New Mexico, even Oregon and Texas. We're taking a second look, but he chose Fresno, the place he was born in. His family from Dinuba, just up the road, able to travel here for the majority of his home games. You, you know what's remarkable, Roy, is, is every grad grad transfer situation is different. There, there's no two that are quite the same. 
and I'm always intrigued, as you are, in how players kind of, well, how, well, how did he come here? How, did you identify him? Well, no, he, went, he had gone to school up the road. And we talked to his old high school coach, and he wanted to come somewhere close to home. And I, I think it's a great story, and everyone wins. And Fresno State's really happy having him as a quarterback. And you see some of the numbers. He has been extremely accurate. Is Johnson with a nice stutter step into BYU territory. And he's not turning the football over. And, and let's be honest with ourselves, Tom, in the Mountain West Conference, you got a quarterback that's accurate, doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, you're going to have a chance. Oh, yeah. And if you have receivers like this, Keyshawn Johnson, that's his second catch of the night. Just a quick throw, and he's up the field. Rivers on first down. Bulldogs running tempo. A couple of freshman backs this year for Fresno State, Ronnie Rivers and Jordan Mims. Deshaun Johnson now has caught a pass in 31 straight games with a couple of grabs already tonight. Yeah, that's impressive, too. 31 straight games. He sees the ball. Jeff Tedford told me before the game, he's the one guy they got to get the ball to. Often, early and often, and prefer more often. And Lasso to the backfield for a loss of two. Taki Taki got there. I'll make it third down and long. Sione Takitaki -taki coming off the backside, unblocked. It just does a great job chasing the play. Just really has a great angle coming off the edge. And, you know, he just cuts inside the tackle's block there to make the hit in the backfield. It's the one player we heard mentioned the most by the Fresno State offensive coaches. And by Kalen DeBoer, who has an interesting story to tell as well. On third down, McMarion delivers a strike, but it's incomplete. Deshaun Johnson, the intended target. And that'll make it fourth down. Boy, that was a precision throw, and it looked like it was on the mark. Shelton in coverage. Yeah, the ball might have just been a little bit late. Shelton caught up to it, batted it away. So the second straight possession that'll end in a punt for Fresno State after the early touchdown and field goal. And with just under three and a half to play in the first half, Cougars will have a chance. But again with poor field position. Fair catch made at the seven. And a penalty marker down inside the one. We'll check that after a punt of 37. So we wondered which one of these two teams would show up tonight. BYU victorious last week. Home win against San Jose State, just its second victory of the season. Fresno State has won five, but they lost a week ago at home to UNLV and a big upset in the Mountain West. And Tom, it appears as if both defenses have come to play this evening and maybe both offenses still in search of some sort of rhythm. Well, we know BYU's offense is still searching. They came in only averaging 15 points a game, and I just think that this is a game where they just have to spread the ball out a little bit more to their playmakers, really identify the guys that are going to be making the plays, and I think we identified one so far, Matt Bushman, the tight end for BYU, having a nice night so far. We'll see if Mangum tries to get him going on this drive. Still a flag inside the one. No word from the official. Here we go. Reggie Smith with a call. Violation. Receiving team had two players wearing jersey number 22. The penalty is declined. Fresno takes over. First down. Timeout. Eva Lee and Squally Canada on the field at the same time for the Cougars. You don't see that call too often. It'll be first and ten when we return. Chris, thank you very much. Back here in Fresno, the Big Ten is in a bit of a quandary after Ohio State went down. Penn State lost again. Quick pitch and catch for BYU. Shoved out crossing the 10 by Johnny Johnson. After a gain of four, Shumway making another catch. A 
rule him out at the 12. That's a gain of five. Under three to play in the first half. Miami looked good in a home victory against Virginia Tech. And I think the Hurricanes, Tom, were in search of that resume building win. And they finally got one against the one loss Hokies before issuing that second setback. Yeah, not an easy game for them, but they did come to play. It well, was a big win. Now back stacked up by Malik Forrester. Our Week 9 Monday Night Football matchup is a big NFC North rivalry game between the Lions and Packers. As the Bulldogs utilize a timeout. From Lambeau Field, Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern. Over on ESPN. And the game is also available on ESPN2 in Spanish. It's been a busy night for our Big 12 officiating crew. And the dulcet tones of Reggie Smith giving us our instructions. Now Bulldogs sending a couple of players into the league. You can watch them for Monday Night Football, including Devontae Adams and Charles Washington. A great job Derek Carr has done for the Raiders at quarterback. And tell you what, he's got a very bright future. A lot of people would tell you Fresno State has the three best players in the three major sports in this country at the pro level. More on that in a minute. Third down here. Out of the timeout. Mangum pump fakes and fires a pass. It's caught. That'll move the chains. Johnny Johnson with a stop. Cougars just one for five on third down before that sequence. As the grab is made by Jonah Trineman. Well, that's how you created a little space, too. You pump fake and it, it holds defenders. And that's a night nice, that was built into the play there and getting the ball to Trinaman just for enough for the first down. Now you and I were very curious this week to hear what's been happening with BYU this season because when you think of Tanner Mangum, you think of big plays at end of games. Pass is incomplete and dropped by Hefo. You think about the Hail Mary against Nebraska during Mangum's freshman year, and you think about BYU's offensive attack, and they're going to be throwing it all over the place. And I'll tell you what, it just hasn't been there this season for a bunch of reasons, honestly. No, but that was his best throw tonight, right there, and Hefo dropped it. And, and I mean, the ball came out of his hands, Roy. I was watching Mangum the whole way, and, and he unleashed that ball. Well, Bakri inside give. And punishes his way up to the 28 brought down by Helmuth. About a yard short of the first down. Boy, El Bakri, he's, he's getting the tough yards, I'll tell you that. Running into the teeth of that Bulldog defense. Just to walk on, maybe earning a scholarship with all of the injuries. The BYU backfield, Mangum straight ahead, and that'll move the sticks. So the Cougars, back-to-back -back third down conversions, but time. Could be an issue with 135 remaining. Well, they struggled before the half last week against San Jose State. They drove down the field and just couldn't punch the ball into the end zone. Mangum steps up, fires a pass. Hefo, the intended receiver, nearly picked off, and Hefo in the seam could still be running if that pass was on target. And Mangum really took a shot that time. He took a shot as he threw the ball. See it on the replay here, and he fires it, trying to get Hefo down the middle of the field, and he gets brought down by OKK. Or an injured player. Tobin OKK applying the pressure. That's one of the reasons the pass sailed. We're going to take another look at Mangum. What's been an injury? riddled campaign this year in the second season for Kalani Sitake. Yeah, he's had that high ankle sprain and that really, you know, it sets you back and, and it's hard to practice because it hurts so much and it appears that heavily taped ankle might be the source of his problems again. Well, Mangum, a lot of people remember what he did during his freshman year. He was a backup a season ago as Taysom Hill took over. And the touchdown pass against Nebraska on fourth down back on September 5th of that season. 
Really had the BYU faithful excited about their prospects with Mangum leading the charge. And now the backup steps in as Bo Hodge hands off inside. And a nice gain by Canada as he bolts ahead to the 48. It's a gain of 18 yards, and we'll see what Bo Hodge can do. He's made two starts this season, Tom. He was hurt at Utah State. And he drops the snap and keeps the play alive somehow. Floats it deep, looking for Treneman. Jump ball. And it is incomplete. Johnny Johnson in coverage. A lot happening on that play. Well, and, and Johnny Johnson did a great job of not interfering with the receiver. Hodge just flat out dropped the snap. And, and again, you know, you get into that shotgun and you're, you want your eyes to be down the field, drop the ball. He ended up unleashing a pretty good throw down the field, but Johnson not interfering with the receiver and the ball drops incomplete. Second and 10. Cougars with two timeouts remaining. From the 48, Hodge, in the zone read, takes it outside for a short pickup. And the Cougars will utilize one of their two remaining timeouts here. Well, uh, Jeffrey Eli Allison. Liu calls their second timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to 52 seconds? 52 seconds, please. And the graphic tells the story. They've had five different players take snaps at quarterback, including the Wildcat, Austin Kofinsis. And the BYU faithful hoping that guy with the headset had a little more eligibility. Ty Detmer, how about that? <laughs> Thank you. Threw for over 15,000 yards, won the Heisman Trophy back in 1990, and still beloved in Provo. Did such a remarkable job back then, and now as a play caller, trying to get Tanner Mangum to that next level, and now with Bo Hodge, he's got his work cut out for him. Well, and I was joking with Ty before the game we're standing there watching the quarterbacks throw and I said you know Ty I said you know what I don't like about you and, and he kind of looked at me like what I go you made it look really easy and it's not easy and he started laughing because he knew I was joking he did make it look easy though Ty Detmer on third down Hodge rifles a shot far side and it's caught Jonah Tredman makes the catch and he toasted Johnson in coverage. Well, that's a heck of a throw there. It looked like a back shoulder throw right in between two defenders. Gives cover two. He stuck it right in the hole. Cougars with one timeout remaining. After the 27-yard gain, Hodge stands tall. And delivers another strike that's nearly picked off. Micah Simon near the sideline. It was interrupted by Jerron Bryant. Well, Jaron Bryant had the pick six earlier that was called back. Yeah, Jaron Bryant really getting a good look. I like what the defensive backs of Fresno State have done. They, they kind of cheat a little bit. They look in, Roy, and not only do they pattern read a little bit, but they're, they're watching the quarterback and what direction he's going, what side of the field. They're trying to get a little extra jump. Hodge. Short pass incomplete. Bo Tanner fought that one off with Brian again in coverage. 13th play of the drive coming up. Only 26 ticks on the clock left here in the first half. Well, Brian seeing the ball real well from his defensive back position. They're bringing in another defensive back going true dime here. Expecting BYU to try to hit the end zone here. Hodge replacing Manga moments ago. Cougars need 10 yards here on third down. Hodge tripped up inside the 30 by Jeffrey Allison. And they'll lose a couple of yards there to increase the length of this field goal attempt. As time winds down, Cougars will utilize their final timeout. Boy, Allison drops Hodge for a loss of five, but just great read and react that time by that middle linebacker, Jeffrey Allison, continuing. Third and final timeout of the half. 
continuing to come up with huge plays. Well, Jeff Tedford telling us this week that Allison wanted to wear number nine, but that jersey retired here <laughs> at Fresno State. And it's worn by the great Kevin Sweeney. He had to call Kevin up as camp ensued to see if he could wear the jersey. Sweeney finally approved. And so Jeff Tedford took the number nine jersey, put it in his locker. Allison saw it. The soft spoken star he is said nothing to Tedford. And finally, Jeff came up to him and said, Hey, son. You got your jersey. What do you think? He says, Coach, I appreciate it. But that just speaks volumes about Allison's personality more than anything else. I thought that was funny. Jeff Tedford was like, hey, come on, man. I, I called Sweeney for you. <laughs> I got him to unlock the jersey, you know, and you didn't even mention it <laughs> until, they, until they walked off the practice field. That was funny. Well, he's soft-spoken kid, right? Now the defensive play caller. Orlando Steinauer told us his care factor as high as any player on the team and that's why we have him out there and he also shed those 25 pounds you mentioned earlier which has put him in a great position for this Bulldogs defense Red Allman from 46 try to slice this lead down to four and the Bulldogs calls their second timeout of the half 30 seconds We'll have one more remaining and you see this often the coaches like to do this. We'll use all those timeouts at times and don't get Tuesday night on ESPN. We'll have the exclusive reveal the college football playoff top 25 rankings once again. All gets underway at 7 Eastern. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom. Coaches reactions as well as a live interview with committee chairman Kirby Hoka. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app and I'm here to tell you. The committee got it right last week, and that really, that was the majority opinion if you listen to all the pundits out there. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they got it right with the exception. Of, why would you put Alabama two in any poll? In any poll. No wins over teams currently ranked yeah. in the AP Top 25 before tonight, Mike. Yeah. How about the eyeball test? They uh, look good. They look really good. Almond's kick on the way is long enough and good. Red Allman is second field goal of the night. And that'll slice that advantage down to four as we go to halftime. A 64-yard drive in 15 plays, just over three minutes off the clock. And we got a ball game as we send you to the studio with Chris Cotter in the game. Chris. Back in Fresno, this is ESP College Football presented by Geico on a beautiful Saturday evening in the Wild West. 10 to 6 is our score to begin our second half inside of Bulldog Stadium. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, our first two quarters not necessarily dominated by the defenses. BYU with the advantage in terms of time of possession and also total yards, but Fresno State the advantage on the scoreboard. The four point lead courtesy. The touchdown run by Jordan Mims. Well, and BYU getting points right before halftime. I thought that was important. O'Neal from his seven. A nice jump cut, a stutter step, crossing the 30, and driven down at the 31 after a return of 24. Now the Bulldogs getting the job done early in this game. Started the contest with a field goal and a touchdown on their first two possessions. And punted their last two drives to end the first half. And we'll take over with decent field position. Led by the Oregon State transfer, Marcus McMarion. And Roy Fresno State with 58 yards rushing the ball. They need to pick that up. They average 168 coming into tonight's game. And it really helps their pass game as well. Small game up for grabs. Fresno State with a win can clinch bowl eligibility. BYU trying to win it just its third game this year as Mims off right tackle. Brought down by Taki Taki. You know, the drive that BYU had earlier tonight, a 14-play drive, 78 yards. That's Fresno State wants to eat some of the clock. They want to mix run pass. It's a nice gain on a run play on first down. It gives you a chance on second down to do some things in the passing game here. Gain of six and a half. Mims, the deep handoff. 
And Lasso down near the line of scrimmage. Tony Alu with the stop. I'll make it third down. Well, Fresno State, two of five on third down conversions in the first half. And while good, they want to be striking at a little higher percentage. Bulldogs need two yards here. Opening possession of the second half. Tunnel screen. Scott has it. Twists and turn his way for the first down. Pau brought him down, but not before he picked up three on third and two. Damari Scott with a nice catch on that tunnel screen. And, you know, again, simple throw, simple pitch catch. Enough for the first down just by about a yard, but who's counting yards right now, right? Third catch of the evening for Damari Scott. O'Neal and Rivers in the backfield. It's DeJounte O'Neal. Driven backwards after a gain of a yard and a half. It's kind of a litmus test game for both of these programs. Fresno State playing a very physical BYU team that doesn't have the kind of record that indicates there's talent. But clearly there is. A lot of the coaches we talked to this year have no interest in playing the Cougars because at the line of scrimmage, physical, nice size. There's some speed on both sides of the football as well. Schedule's been brutal, Tom, as you indicated in the first two quarters. But win by Fresno State, to become bowl eligible, and really just another notch in the belt of first-year head coach Jeff Tadford. Yeah, I like their D-line. Another guy I really like is Fred Warner, number four. Really plays well. Down the field, looking for Johnson. Batted away at the last minute. A late flag on the field. Chris Wilcox got in there. Johnson had a step, Tom. On a bang-bang play near the 25. Well, and I think they're going to catch Chris Wilcox for draping an arm over the shoulder of the receiver that time. The side judge had a good look at it. Wilcox made a nice play on the ball. However, I believe he had his arm wrapped around the receiver. Pass interference, defense number 32. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Liza Tuiaki, the defensive play caller, told us this week Wilcox Probably their best cover guy right now. Given the recent injury to Troy Warner. And just how he spun Johnson around. That left hand over the top. Johnson sold it pretty good, too. Yes, he did. Second penalty of the night on BYU. McMarion back to the air. Looking for the seam. Pass will be dropped. Coverage against Kashawn Johnson. Micah Hanneman was in there on a play that probably should have gone for six. Heck of a throw by Marcus McMarion. The grad transfer from Oregon State launching one between the hash marks. And I'll tell you, that's, that's how you draw it up to throw it. You game plan it that way. Just catch it. Marion knows they missed a golden opportunity there. Ronnie Rivers in the backfield on second and ten. McMarion surveys, delivers a strike. Johnson has it on second and ten. They'll net 14 as the drive continues. Zane Anderson in coverage. Boy, McMarion really fooled the defense that time, Roy. He ended up looking left and, and just created a window for the throw and just great quarterback in there. Josh Hoka checks back in 33 and red for Fresno State. Mr. Consistency for the Bulldogs backfield this year straight ahead. And another punishing run for a pickup of five. Taking a look back at, at Mc, McMarion and how he moved the defense. Watch his eyes and he goes far left and he comes back. And I mean, right there, you're holding defenders just with slight movements. Patient run this time by Hoke. As a former NFL quarterback, how difficult 
is it to execute a play that looks so simple in nature like what we just saw? Well, everything has to align, right? And, and you have to have the right defense. You have to have the right play call towards that defense, and then you have to execute it on top of that. On third down, tempo for the Bulldogs. Hoke will be wrestled backwards. That Impulsifer got there first. It'll be fourth down, and now an interesting call for Jeff Tetford. Fourth and just over a yard to gain. Keep this drive going. And they go for it on occasion, Roy. 7 to 12 for 58% during the season, but they're going to bring out Camacho this time to get attempt another three pointer. And this is the right call. It'll push it back to a touchdown advantage if Camacho connects. And he has been very solid this year, 15 of 18. This attempt from 37. And a penalty now on the Bulldogs will back them up. Five yard penalty, fourth down. And, and that's a crucial penalty. That's on the bench. It, you know, Coach Tedford, I'm sure, will own that one and say, hey, listen, that's my fault, pushing you back five yards. However, I saw Camacho in pregame warm-up. He, he was hitting him from 50-plus easily. I, I mean, he just has a dynamic leg. He's already connected from 43. This effort now pushed back to 42 from the left hash. Wind is not a factor this evening. And a rifle... Right between the pipes. What a weapon Jimmy Camacho is this year for first-year head coach Jeff Tedford. And that'll culminate a 51-yard, 10-play drive for the Bulldogs. 13-6, our new score. 10.07 remaining here in the third. Back in Fresno, seven-point advantage for the Bulldogs. Tanner Mangum on your left, Bo Hodge on your right. Which quarterback will it be to start this next BYU possession? Mangum went out towards the end of the first half here to re-aggravate his ankle injury. Hodge came in, did a nice job. Led the Cougars down the field for a last-second field goal. And decision time coming up for Kalani Sitake. Shelton two yards deep in his own end zone. And a burst of speed tripped up, crossing the 25. And I'm betting it's the guy with the helmet on. What do you think, partner? I love your ability to analyze this game. Mangum in the first half, if you're just tuning in. The hard hit from Robert Stanley on a pass that went incomplete. Check that OKK made the stop, or tried to make the stop. Yeah, and Mang Mangum went out. Bo Hodge came in. Mangum, 14-25, 109 yards in the first half. You know, a lot of times it gets cold at halftime, but uh, sure enough, he's one tough player, that's for sure. Squally Canada keeping this play alive, crossing the 45, ahead to the 47. That's a gain of 22 yards, and BYU has been in desperate need of a big play with two scoring drives in the first half. 28 plays, 141 yards, but just two field goals to show for it. Well, and they need production out of the running back position, too. Take some pressure off the quarterback, and that really utilize that big offensive line. The center and two guards are really the experienced bunch of that front five. The front five's played every game, started and played every game thus far this year. That's the good news, but the injury's piling up. At every other BYU position, looking for a big play here. Mangum fired a strike far side that was broken up by Juju Hughes. And Trineman down the field had a chance momentarily. And, and Roy, you don't get a lot of zone out of this Fresno State defense, but they kind of got locked into, well, they went a little high-low. I think the safety just made a really good play on the ball. Hughes that time. The ball just a shade late. A shade late. And you know how I like to see the ball come out quick. Mangum straight ahead. Up to midfield after a gain of three. So third down and seven coming up. And 
mentioned this moments ago 28 plays 141 yards total in the two BYU scoring drives in the first two quarters and everything else really not much to show for it. Now in third third down's really been a bugaboo for them too. Four and nine. Just on the season they just haven't struck gold on third down. Defenses checks back in. Mangum. Bushman. First down. Matt Bushman continues his great work. The freshman from Tucson picks up 15. Yeah, and that's Bushman's sixth catch tonight. That's a great play. Great throw that time. And great design of play by Ty Detmer. Like that Mangum really stuck with his tight end that time. His tight end really created space. Found a nice window in the defense. Completion, first down. Bushman, a star in the making. Quick pitch and catch. Simon's got it. And a gain of eight yards on first down. Hughes with a hit. You know, a lot of times I think the decision to go with the a little extra veteran quarterback, Roy, they know he, he's well-versed in the game plan. Although Bo Hodge showed some signs of what he can do. I, I, I love his arm. I like his eyes across the field. But Tanner Mangum probably... I'm guessing had all the reps this week in practice. Feels comfortable with the game plan, and they're playing against a really tough defense. Four-man front for the Bulldogs on second and short. Canada, a nice jump cut. Will gain three. He only needed two, and the drive continues. Allison wrestled him down. BYU without four running backs tonight, including very elusive K.J. Hall, who went for over 100 yards last week in the first half against San Jose State. So it's been Canada and Braden El Bakri for the most part in the Cougars' backfield. Halfway through the third quarter, Cougars trying to tie it up. They have yet to reach Pater tonight. Pump fake Mangum delivers another missile. Shumway with the catch and a gain of eight. Well, I love Tanner Mangum. Ty Detmer must have gotten his ear at halftime. Said, listen, you got to start using your eyes to your benefit. Move the defense a little bit. He started out left that time. A little pump, a little short pump fake, and then came back. And Shumway was there. And again, nice route concept and another completion. Cougars have moved the football between the 20s tonight. End zone has been a different story. Canada. Off of right tackle. Ball may have popped out late. We'll check what the call is as Allison got there first. And they'll signal Fresno State football. Bell came out of there with it. Number four in red. And Canada fighting for those extra yards. Coughed it up. Well, the ball did come out late, as you said there, Roy, and, you know, a really costly mistake this time by Canada. The fumble is under further review. And he was reaching down to the 15-yard line. The question was, was the knee down before the ball was popped loose? Remember, the ground cannot cause a fumble, and that's a really close play to overturn it. It's got to be indisputable video evidence, of course. Yep, it'll be interesting. I didn't think it was a fumble right when I saw it. I had glasses on it, looking at it. Uh, and, and I would say that it, that's not a fumble. Our replay official tonight with our Big 12 crew, Jack McDonald. We will point out that your veteran broadcasting team here in the booth is batting 1,000 this year when it comes to the replay reviews. Ever so subtle, Phil. Just let them know. And I'm going to tell you... Looking at that video twice, I think they're going to overturn this one. Brown cannot cause a fumble. It appeared as if the knee was down. The question yep. is, will Jack McDonald see it the same way that we do? One more look. At that point, the hand does not mean that he's down. It's only beginning at the wrist for Canada. 
Yeah, no one ripped at the ball, right? And, and you said it. The, the ground cannot cause a fumble. That's at every level of football. It really wasn't that subtle, was it? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I like your... I, I like the tenacity. Well, I do. We enjoy coming to Fresno. This has been a good spot for us the last couple of years. It's been a great game so far. And these two teams getting after each other with a lot at stake. BYU is going to play 13 games this season. They're not going to go to a bowl game. And Fresno State with a chance to clinch bowl eligibility tonight after a 1-11 season last year. And it's kind of a litmus test to see where both of these programs truly are with a pair of head coaches combined three years at their respective institutions. And well, the, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to say the general rule of thumb, the longer this takes, a lot of times that indicates they're trying to figure out the spot and what exactly is going on where the next play should after be located. Review, the ball carrier was down by pull at the 15-yard line. It'll be BYU's ball, third and two, from the 15-yard line. The clock will start up. I'm ready for play. And the beat goes on. They're still batting 1,000. BYU had a pick six reverse due to offsetting penalties in the first half. That was a huge sequence. That right there was as well. Kalani Satake with new life on this possession. Third down. Coming up. Now back, he checks back in in the backfield. Kavintis is the quarterback operating out of the Wildcat and movement up front. Full start offense number 71. Five yard penalty. It's third down. Austin Hoyt, the junior from California, the guilty party. Well, good concept. They, they came out, broke the huddle from the sideline on that third and short, and Kavintis was the Wildcat quarterback. Mangum was lined up as a wide receiver, and this time Mangum back receiving the center snap. Mangum with time, rifles another pass, caught, and that'll move the chains. What an effort by Micah Simon on the ninth play of this drive. He'll pick up the huge third down conversion. Yeah, it's great effort, great run after catch that time by Simon. He gave Mangum a nice picture to throw to, really showed him his numbers, ball right on target, and then and then shaking loose a defender and fighting for that first down. That was that was a really good play by Simon. Tom, you can feel this Cougars offense trying to crank this engine up, and it sputtered a couple of times, trying to get it to turn over. They're getting close. And closer to the end zone. Canada tripped up crossing the five. BYU can secure a first down inside the two. It'll be second and short for now. Yeah, you're right. You know, Roy, they're playing with more confidence. And we we talked to the coaching staff yesterday, and, and it came across in meetings this week, too, where last week's victory, while, you, you know, it's not going to look like a great win against San Jose State. It's not a strength of schedule win by any means. But it gives you that confidence to put the ball in the end zone, and that's that's what they've needed this season. Eighth carry for Canada. Jump cut. End zone. Touchdown. And the Cougars an extra point away from tying this one up. Good solid drive. Good solid drive. Good play calling. Good execution. And they dodged the bullet with the fumble. Canada, really nice cut that time. Getting back and following that big offensive line, doing a good job pushing the pile. So the Cougars, out of halftime, finding their spark, have tied it up at 13. Seventy-five yards and eleven plays, Tom, and we've got a new ball game here in Fresno in this critical non-conference matchup. ESP.
ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chevy. The only brand to earn J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs, two years in a row. The Fresno State Ice Cream Shop. Cookies and cream, my preference, Tom Ramsey. What about you? It's kind of soft. Cookies and cream is soft? Yeah, That's the way to go. Soft. Yeah. Sometimes a little vanilla, almond. That young man wanted Chocolate some ice chip. cream. Chocolate chip, that's so basic. Tied at 13, new ball game back in Fresno. And the stutter step crossing the 10. BYU with momentum and the fans that have made the trek here to the Valley. Liking what they have seen thus far after a win last week at home against San Jose State. Cougars suddenly with momentum. Yeah, nice drive. Nice payoff of the drive, 75 yards. Canada going over for the final yards. But you, you know, Roy, they did start to gain momentum there, and, and that's what BYU has to do. I mean, even though they got 13 points, think about this. They average 15. I think you have to get near 30 to beat Fresno State. I, I, that's what I believe. Ronnie Rivers, the running back. And operating out of the Wildcat. Dance his way across the 15. Fresno State with its worst starting field position of the night on this drive. Pick up four yards. It'll make it second and six. You know, look at that ice cream kind of made me hungry. We don't have runners bringing us food like some of our crews I, I've seen <laughs> across the ESPN networks. They kind of miss out on that a little bit. I think Herb Street has a runner or two. Rightfully so, I might add. Second and six. McMarion, another strike. And a sweet move initially by Kashawn Johnson. Ahead to the 27-yard line. That'll move the chains. Boy, Keyshawn Johnson, there's a reason why the quarterbacks really like him. And it's a solid route that's run. He shows him his numbers and... McMarion does a great job getting the ball out on time. Split backs this time. O'Neal and Rivers. Rivers motions out. McMarion will spot number 20. And the jitterbug with a punishing end of that run ushered out of bounds short of the 35. Oloku felt the brunt of that run. Uh, Rivers is really a special player. He had an elbow injury last week. Was him just getting back into the swing of things, and they're using him in spot duty tonight. But all three backs really have good hands coming out of the backfield. Rivers, Mims, and Hokett. Hokett just checked back in on second and short. Six-man front for BYU. Inside give, and Hokett goes nowhere. Wrestled backwards. And lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Kafusi led the charge. So BYU with momentum and a very important third down coming up for Fresno State. Under two and a half to play here in the third. Well, you mentioned Kafusi's name, and here's a guy, 6'9", Roy, coming off the edge, and he's just, he's, a, he's as big as they get, right? But what they do sometimes, they put him over the ball on passing downs and use him to distract the quarterback. And that's where he's lined up right now. Pick number 90. Power set on third and two. No wide receivers in this Fresno State formation. McMarion under center. Jet sweep. Scott's got the first down. And a nifty play that showed power. Ended up with speed being the difference. Yeah, Fresno State's done a good job with play calling. Jeff Tedford, Kalen DeBoer. The offensive coordinator really mixing up the plays well, run pass, and continuing to gain first downs. Jordan Mims, the new Fresno State running back, out of the pistol. Play action, McMarion looking deep. Wide open is Scott. A nice move, another good one. And spun down inside the 30. That's a gain of 35 yards on another well-designed play by Fresno State's offense. Very well designed, and you know, anytime you run a corner 
and the receiver has ample room to catch the ball and then turn it up and gain additional yards. Scott doing a good job hauling it in. Second play through the air, over 20 yards today for McMarion. And Mim straight ahead. Well, you mentioned the offensive play caller for the Bulldogs, Kalen DeBoer, former OC at Eastern Michigan, also head coach at the NAIA level. He won three national championships there, was 67 and three over in Sioux Falls. And what a find by Jeff Tedford, who just picked up the phone and said, Hey, are you interested in coming out to Fresno <laughs> when he saw that Eastern Michigan was playing in a bowl game last year? And it really has worked out well as DeBoer has game plan the Mountain West Conference as well as any OC this year. McMarion surveys. And rifles one incomplete to Johnson, who spun down after a nice pickup by Chris Wilcox. Well, and I asked DeBoer before the game, I said, hey, when you showed up on campus, were you impressed with the quality of athletes that, that they had here at Fresno State? And he said, you know, I was. They, you know, and then the bonus was McMarion coming in at the end of fall camp. That was a huge win and a get for them. And a good look at Kalen DeBoer there on the left. Final play of the third quarter. We are tied at 13. Stay tuned. A good one brewing here in the Valley. Beautiful night in Fresno. Tied at 13 to begin our fourth quarter. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, joined by the next best thing to a super moon. A beaver moon, I'm being told, is what you just saw. We'll take our trusted crew and their word for that. First and ten. Bulldogs trying to go back out in front. On the ninth play of this possession. Mims stood up, driven backwards. Taki Taki got there first. And BYU, Tom, after giving up those early ten points, has been rock solid these last two quarters. Again, Taki Taki on the edge, holding it up well. Bulldogs utilizing tempo, inside give to Mims. And after a two-yard gain, Taki Taki brings him down once again to make it third and short. Third trip in the red zone tonight for Fresno State, operating with tempo once again. Mims, stutter step. Was able to dive backwards towards the five. Boy, that's tough running too. Really tough running inside the tackles and both Kafusi, the big defensive end, blasted him as well as Fred Warner coming from linebacker. And no signal yet as to whether that's a first down or not. Officials timeout for measurement. He knew it was close. He had a great extra effort on the play. He took a shot, though, by two players right off the edge. Now, one more look is Mims, the freshman. It's been a pair of first-year ground gainers this year for Fresno State with Mims and Rivers. And he kept that play alive for an extra fourth of a yard, perhaps, by putting that hand down. It may get him what he needs. And it did. So some nifty running by Jordan Mims. First and goal for Fresno State. Nice effort by Mims. Another good play call that time by Fresno State. And now they gotta, they gotta get the pay dirt now. Mims checks back in. Power formation shown by the Bulldogs. 12th play of the drive. Mims tripped up near the goal line. It'll be second and goal from inside the one. Well, it's a really nice play call out of a out of a double wing formation, and they bring around Damari Scott. McMarion. Mims stood up, driven backwards, and he's going to lose a yard. Well, Fresno State trying to catch BYU off guard and really couldn't do it in that sequence. 
and, and Roy, it was the same play as, as the one before. And Mims hit that one up inside. He did. He just didn't follow his blockers that time. He had a huge hole out to the left side. He just missed it. And we saw the Jets sweep out of that formation earlier this half. They'll go three wide here. Trying to spread out that BYU defense. Mims straight ahead for the touchdown. And a fist pump by McMary into boot. Bulldogs back out in front. Second touchdown of the night for the freshman Jordan Mims. 87 yards in 14 plays. Well, nice play by Mims. He got a nice block by the tight end, Ritterine, and they punched it over. Camacho's extra point is good. Bulldogs back out in front by a touchdown. Well, it's a good response to the previous drive by BYU. Now, BYU gets the ball back. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff this season. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all year long. Fresno State faithful and on their feet often tonight. First meeting between these two teams here inside of Bulldog Stadium since 1998. A pair of old school whack rivals. Remember some of those Wild West shootouts back in the day, Tom? Hey, used to be a sellout here. They might be coming back. The Bulldogs are real. Shelton from four yards deep with a crease and sent down quickly crossing the 15. Bell Sunday with a countdown crew starting at 10 a.m. Eastern over on ESPN. They'll have all the early breaking stories, game previews, plus injury updates also streaming live on the ESPN app. And don't forget, Monday Night Football is back as well for a big NFC North rivalry matchup. Lions and Packers, the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Monday Night Countdown kicks off coverage, 6 Eastern on ESPN. Spanish broadcast available right here on ESPN2. Mangum back in at quarterback. Bushman with a grab. And that Bushman continues his good work as one of the top tight ends in the country. And the freshman from Tucson, the nice pickup on first down. Yeah, That'll Bush, move the chains. Bushman's doing well, running good routes. Cougars using tempo, pitch and catch. Simon crossing the 30. Gritty effort tonight for Tanner Mangum. Appeared to have re-injured his lower extremities there in the first half. Left momentarily in favor of Bo Hodge. But has taken every snap at quarterback for the Cougars here in the second half. Yep, 20-32, 163. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Inside give to Canada. He's had the hot hand so far in these final two quarters. Brought down by Jeffrey Allison. It'll bring up third down and two. Boy, and Allison has just been so good defensively. He was the... Mountain West defense, Defensive Player of the Week a few weeks ago against San Diego State with 10 tackles, and he's up around double-digit tackles again tonight. Mangum snuck over to the sideline to retrieve the play from Ty Detmer. Cougars 6 of 11 on third down tonight. Five-man front, Canada. A nice jump cut behind the line. He'll pick up three, and the drive continues. Squally Canada has done the job this evening. The junior from California. 44 yards on just five touches on the last possession for BYU. Now approaching 80 yards on 10 touches tonight. Yeah, keep running inside zone if it's there. Mangum the pump fake with time. And slipped and fell in the heart of the pocket. Fortunate that play. 
Didn't end in disaster, and Mangum slow to get up. no foul for intentional grounding. Number 22 was in the area. Officials time out for an injured player. Tom, you hate to speculate there, but it almost looked as if the legs came from right out from underneath him. Time out on the field as we step aside. Back in Fresno moments ago, Tanner Mangum exiting the playing surface for the second time tonight. Being tended to over on the BYU sideline, and you hate to speculate what the injury could be, but he just lost control of his lower body and required assistance to make it over to the BYU bench moments ago. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpot, 20 to 13, our score. And now Bo Hodge back on the field for the second time. Yeah, tough, tough situation there for Tanner. Mangum, he look, appeared as though he hurt his ankle that was his good ankle because he had his left ankle all wrapped up with that high ankle sprain that he's been nursing all year long, and he was hobbling off with his right leg up in the air going off the field. Saw the numbers on Hodge, second down and 10. Squally Canada head to the 40, and nowhere to run. Well, Hodge showed a lively arm in the second quarter as Nathan Madsen with the initial hit, third down and long upcoming, but only the one completion to show for it in four attempts. Yeah, he took one shot downfield and, and almost had a receiver, but on that particular play, he had dropped the snap. So it's important just, one, get the snap, and then make your reads down the field. And he did not step into an easy situation, third and nine. 7 of 12 on third down tonight are the Cougars. Hodge, flush. Looking downfield, pass is incomplete. And he had a target breaking open in Micah Simon, but on the run was not accurate with a toss. It was close. Simon, Simon dropped a ball earlier that was thrown his way tonight, and Hodge does a nice job spinning out. And, it, you know, Roy, when you feel pressure off the edge and you're able to stick your foot in the ground and whip around, it, it's a sign of a quarterback knowing what he's doing, feeling comfortable, but he's just disappointed that the ball was not complete. First punt since the 638 mark of our second quarter. And as Johnson waves for the fair catch at his 12. A punt of 48 yards in Fresno State with possession or field position when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Fresno and Tanner Mangum being carted off the field moments ago, escorted by his parents, Michael and Karen. And what does not appear to be good news for the injured quarterback in his junior season for the Cougars. 20 to 13, our score. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott under 10 to play in a game whose outcome is nowhere close to being decided just yet. No, and he fought hard tonight, too. Tanner Mangum, not everything went his way. 20 to 33, very respectable numbers. And, you know, just a really unfortunate way to go out for him tonight. McMarion remains in at quarterback for Fresno State. The Oregon State transfer. will give it to Mims, who tries to bounce it outside. He cannot. Fred Warner brought him down at the 15. And he's going to lose, too. Well, and the, and the player pulling that time was the center, Aaron Mitchell, out in front, 77, trying to get a block on the edge on Warner, and Warner's just so good. I think he's their best player on defense, and he's been banged up, too. And Kalani Sitake basically told us that verbatim this week. Warner is their best player on that side of the football. Big play here. Bulldogs 60% on third down tonight. Pocket collapses. Dangerous toss. And the pass falls incomplete. 
Well, going to their go to guy, Keyshawn Johnson, and he gets a lot of targets because he deserves them. He usually gets open, and that time, just a tight window. Now three and out, forced by the BYU defense. After Mangum exited moments ago, and that's a huge stop. Cougars right back in it. First punt of the second half for the Bulldogs right here. And Cusick will send it down to the 48. So outstanding field position after the fair catch made by Shelton and a 37-yard effort with a punt. Don't forget Tuesday over on ESPN, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 ranking, 7 Eastern. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, plus the interview with committee chairman Kirby Hokett. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. And I tell you, the committee got it right last week. This is where Tom and I are going this week. Miami moves up in my ranking due to the win against Virginia Tech. And, Tom, you still like Wisconsin. I, I love Wisconsin. Half all year long, I think. I liked them a year ago, too. And I like Alabama one. Hodge back in at quarterback play action on first down. Lofts it deep. And the pass nearly picked off. Juju Hughes. Got a couple of fingers on it. Looking for Micah Simon in the scene. Well, Hughes is arguably their best cover player on defense and just has such great reaction to the football at that time. Just blanketing Simon. And the ball is just a shade behind Simon. It hangs up just for a split second. Hughes is able to break on the ball and make a play. Hodge just one for six off the BYU bench. We'll keep it crossing midfield for a two-yard pickup. OKK with a hit. Well, as we approach third down here, you know, Hodge just hasn't had a lot of snaps. You said it, Roy, earlier. He has started two games this year. One was at home against Wisconsin. They got blown out by Wisconsin, 40 to 6. The second starter was against Utah State. He threw two interceptions, but he also threw a pick six, and then he got knocked out of that game due to a head injury. So again, he faces another long third down. 7 of 13 on third down tonight are the Cougars. Hodge eludes one defensive player and lobs that one incomplete and a late flag toss to the 21. Well, it was double coverage on Treneman. And Tank Kelly was down there, tangled up momentarily. Pass interference, defense, number six. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the guilty party is Kelly. Yeah, they're going to flag, they're going to flag Kelly, who was playing catch-up and all of a sudden jostled with the receiver. And, it, you know, boy, it's... It, it, it's close. He's got a right for the football he, as well. He, he does. And he caught up to the receiver that time, Trenaman, and I thought he got his head around, but referees saw differently. There was contact on both sides. It could have gone either way. Four penalties tonight against the Bulldogs. That went extremely costly. And the pass was tipped and falls incomplete. Stanley got in there. Yeah, Stanley coming off the edge with his arms up high and able to deflect the ball coming out of Hodge's hand and just turns into a throw that's uncatchable. Tommy's one for seven in search of some sort of big play. Yeah, and, and he's not getting any easy breaks by the Fresno State defense because they're mixing up coverage on him and they're bringing some heat. Tight end Bushman has it, a short gain. He'll give him three, Bailey with a hit. Boy, and Roy, I'll tell you what, the defense, that time they rush three, they drop eight, they double coverage the receiver that caught the ball. I mean, they're, they're playing tendency football here. I expect them, Fresno State, to blitz this time. You wonder if this is four down territory for the Cougars, trailing by a touchdown with six and a half to play. Canada kept the legs churning. We'll pick up four to make it fourth and two. 
Well, kind of a conservative play call on third down. Does that mean they'll go for it here? Well, they got blitz that time, too. There were six coming. They had some good games going on up front with that defensive line. So just outside of field goal range at the 23. Now the Cougars will go for it. 0 for 1 on fourth down tonight. And, and you're under nine seconds. On the, they may have to call a timeout here. BYU calls their first timeout of the half. And now what do you dial up under six to play with a backup quarterback that's had a cold start? We'll find out in a few moments. ESPN College Football presented by Geico. Touchdown ball game back in Fresno. Biggest play of the night coming up right now. Fourth and one. And Fresno oh. State going to use a timeout, and I like Fresno that move State by Jeff Tedford. Timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Well, it's an interesting call for sure. You can reset your defense. Obviously, they didn't feel comfortable with the package they had in and what BYU was showing. I thought BYU was going to power run that time. They had El Bakri in there, and he's a big load. He's a big kid, 240 pounder, inside zone behind those big linemen. Weapon X is what they call El Bakri. And we'll see if they stick with that same play after Fresno State has a chance to talk things over. Assuming that's what they were going to do. But I'm with you. I, I like the idea of keeping this play on the ground. Given the cool start by Bo Hodge, a quarterback. In this game for the injured Tanner Mangum. Four for 17 on fourth down this year, the Cougars. 0 for 1 tonight. He'll roll the pocket with Hodge. Tipped and incomplete. George Helmuth got there to break up the pass. And Hodge tried to extend it as long as he could to no avail. How about that? We think they're going to run power football, and they end up rolling the pocket, which I, I think it gets dangerous, Roy, because you cut so much of the field off, and Helmuth somehow gets the ball tipped up in the air and almost almost got picked off. That was, that was really dicey there. Boy, tip balls aren't good. Bulldogs trying to win their sixth game of the season. They were 1-11 last year. And still with a chance to win the Mountain West Conference Championship. Flag on the field. As the run moves ahead to the 30. Kafusi with a stop. Illegal formation. Offense more than four in the back there. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, the receiver wasn't lined up on the line of scrimmage. And we saw that play be extremely costly for NC State earlier today. Or yesterday now on the yeah. East Coast as Wolfpack had a chance maybe to tie it late against number four Clemson. An illegal shift penalty. Brought it back to fourth and 15 and then Ryan Finley was picked off in the final play of the game. Hoke at the new Fresno State running back. And the inside give ahead to the 25. Now BYU with two timeouts remaining, under five to play, so certainly a sense of urgency, especially to try to force a three and out here to gain good field position for an offense that has sputtered at best tonight with Bo Hodge. Yeah, the BYU defense has really stepped up well tonight, and, and especially in the second half here. And Hoke it. I'm, I'm impressed with his running ability. Nine carries so far, 47 yards. He's been the leading rusher, and, and they have not been easy yards. That's really what he does best. Tripped up after the handoff, crossing the 30. Third and manageable upcoming for Fresno State. 
Approaching four to play. Well, you know, Roy, and, and the other thing that Fresno State on offense, they do well, they formation you, right? They got three wide receivers out to the far side of the field. Well, you have to account for those guys. So you have to get guys out in space. They don't want guys to, to jam the box when you're running the football. They want numbers on their side. Josh Hokett remains on the field on third down. Bulldogs need five. McMarion, pocket collapsing, dangerous toss, and it's out of bounds. Trying to spot Johnson. And with the pocket collapsing, McMarion cannot find his reliable receiver. Actually, I think it's a good call. I, you know, they have a, a route they feel comfortable with, a little comeback route on the far side. McMarion had some pressure in his face. I think that caused the ball just to go a little high, but... Boy, he hung in the pocket nice. What a year this has been for BYU Cougars. Fresh off their second victory of the season. will have a chance to try to tie it up. The end of regulation. And after a booming punt by Cusick. And brought down inside the five. Tom, that's a punt of 67 yards. You want to talk about flipping the field. That's exactly what happened there. 321 left, BYU with possession when we come back. Fresno State in first place in its division in the Mountain West Conference. A win tonight would also mean the Bulldogs become bowl eligible. And for BYU and Kalani Satake trying to win their third game of the season. Bulldogs with a one-game advantage over San Diego State after defeating the Aztecs on the road last month. But a chance now for the Cougars and Bo Hodge. Faced with poor starting field position all night long. Hodge from his own end zone. Rifles a pass complete. Bushman lost it, recovered by Fresno State. Mike Bell popped it out. Jeffrey Allison made the recovery. And what a play by the Bulldogs defense once again, Tom Ramsey. Well, what's interesting, the two playmakers, uh, 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 even a week ago, we were working New, Mex New Mexico at Wyoming. Bob Davey, the head coach of New Mexico, we started talking about Fresno State, and he said, listen, there's two guys on their defense, and Mike Bell, the free safety, jars the ball from Bushman, and the ball just comes flying out of Bushman's arms. And who's right there? Jeffrey Allison, the linebacker. Number nine in red has had a sensational evening. Orlando Steinauer, the defensive play caller, told us this week, Mike Bell, the guy that forced that fumble, is the first player you want off the bus. Physically, he's superior, and he's made all kinds of plays in that Fresno State secondary this year. None bigger than that. Inside handoff ahead of the 20. Well, and it was interesting. You know, before the game, I was talking to the quarterback, Marcus McMarion, and I said, hey, you know, your offense, your boy, your coaches are drawing up great game plans. And he said, yeah, and our defense is playing really good. And, you know, to have him say that, it, I was like, oh, okay. Well, he knows it's all about team, right? But when your defense delivers a big play like that, it's, it's remarkable, number one. It swings the momentum of the game. And then you have the short field on top of that. Cougars with just two timeouts. In another game, experiencing another injury at a skill position. Jordan Mim straight ahead. It'll be two yards short of the first down. And if you're just tuning in, Tanner Mangum injured in the first half, injured again in the second. And was carted off the field. With his parents walking alongside of him. It appeared to be a leg injury. You know, Mims has touched it 18 times tonight, just 48 yards. Hokit has been more productive, and he checks back in on third and two. Mr. Consistency with the football and the first down. Now he scored three touchdowns in the win at San Diego State. First start of the season was last week. He's been a workhorse tonight. 
Yeah, that's that's a big conversion there on, on third down, Roy. They're seven of 13 for the night. Poke it again. The tough yards, 55 yards on 11 carries, and you know, think about it, a long of nine. He's grinding. He is grinding. Well, that's been the story this year for Fresno State. Under new leadership. And a minute and 17 seconds away from becoming bowl eligible. Well, hard to fathom. Given the 1-11 season last year, BYU with two timeouts BYU remaining. We'll use one here. Second timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Well, tonight on Sports Center after Arizona SC over on ESPN, we'll break down how Bedlam impacts the college football race. Kirk Herbstreet reveals his new top four, also sizing up the Heisman race as well. Saquon Barkley now has lost two games this year. I'll tell you what, that guy that plays quarterback for Arizona needs to be more in that mix. And Khalil Tate, Sports Center with Linda Cohn, Stan Barrett, also available on the ESPN app. Stay tuned. It's coming up over on ESPN. I mean, Tate, Rich Rod, what a marriage that's turned out to be. Rest for over 800 yards just last month. Rich Rod, a big, that's another big turning, right? Big win improvement there in Tucson. Getting it done. Yeah, it helps to have quarterbacks that are faster than lightning, right? Just one timeout remaining for BYU. And the Bulldogs can sense this one. M spun down, short of the 10. BYU calls their third and final timeout. 30 seconds. Now the one thing we heard this week from the BYU coaching staff, Kalani Satake especially, we're going to learn from this season. We are learning from this season. I love our kids. I love this school. I love the fans. This is going to make us better. Scoreboard tonight, if this score holds, is it going to look good or feel good? The very passionate Cougars fan base. But they haven't thrown in towel yet this year. The effort's been there all season long. The injuries, Tom, yeah. they've been too much to overcome. And the schedule, by the way, too, has been ultra brutal. Well, the thing is, you know, when you play a schedule like that, Roy, you, you become battle tested. And, you know, they're not shying away from anyone. You know, it's like, well, you know, listen, Tom Holmo, the AD, he, he knows how difficult it is. He's been at all the levels of football. And, you know, when you put a schedule like that together, you go, OK, well, it's either going to be a good year or, or we're not going to be so good on paper. But you can still be good between the lines. Under a minute to play, BYU out of timeouts. Mims came up just short of the first down, so we'll see. Now Fresno State elects to play this sequence. About a 20 second differential between the game clock and the play clock. It's starting to sound like basketball season all of a sudden, isn't it? Uh, I, I think when BYU puts on the film tomorrow, they're going to see some missed plays and, and a couple drop balls. And, it, you know, it's the little things. It's the attention to details. And that's what Jeff Tedford has preached to this team. And that's the... Really, the reason for the Fresno turnaround. State calls their second timeout of the half, 30 seconds. So I'll ask you, clock stops, 20 seconds remaining, fourth down. Do you risk a field goal? Do you simply try to run out the clock, try to get the first down? What do you think about doing here? Well, I know Jeff, Jeff Tedford pretty well. I, I put points on the board, Roy. I, I have a good, you know, Camachos. I think a really good field goal kicker. They have a sound unit. And, it, you know, you put points on the board because then you assure yourself you're probably going to win the game. Camacho sitting out on the playing surface near the 27. And a perfect two for two tonight. And McMarion trots back out there. How about it? And if your run game's going and you feel confident about your offensive line, you try and get it. Poke at the running back in a two-wide receiver formation. Fourth and a short three. 
Okic straight ahead, tripped up, crossing the five. And that should be enough to put this one away. And a first down for Fresno State, and that's going to do it. And how about the Bulldogs? Year one under Jeff Tetford's going to end in a bowl game, and no one saw it coming. Now, congratulations to Jeff Tedford and his entire staff. Think about it, bowl eligible for the 27th time in school history, but it's the turnaround, and it's a big turnaround here in Fresno. Fresno State improves to 6-3, and three, back to Mountain West Conference play next week, and another massive opportunity to try to claim a conference championship. Final score once again, Fresno State 20, BYU 13. For Tom Ramsey, I'm Roy Philpott saying so long as we send you now the college football final.